The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. Second chances, yes, we all need second chances. And for some of us, like me, you need hundredth chances and even more than that. You know, today I wanted to share with you some thoughts about second chances and how God is a God of second and third and fourth and fifth chances and so on and so forth. You know, I'm so grateful that He is a God of second chances, of new beginnings, of fresh starts, because without that, we would all get ourselves in a mess, like we all do at some point in our life. And then if there was no second chance, new beginning or fresh start, we'd stay in that mess. You know, as I look at the Bible, it amazes me how God continues to touch people's lives who were a mess and give them second chances. That His grace and His mercy it, it is so abundant. You know, I think about Moses, and Moses was old. I mean, he was an old man before he had that burning bush experience, and God called him to lead a nation. The Apostle Paul was a persecutor. He hated Christians. He did everything he could to rid Christians from the earth, and yet God touched him. The Bible talks about how he was on the Damascus Road, and he was blinded. And yet God took that whole thing and turned it around where Paul became one of the main contributors and writers of the New Testament. What amazing story about one who hated really Jesus and Christianity and Christians and then was used to help build the church of Jesus. Then we see someone like Peter who denied Christ three times and yet God's grace and mercy flowed upon him in such a way that he was used by God throughout the rest of his life to share the gospel, that Jesus loves you, that Jesus saves, that Jesus is there as a God of redemption, salvation, and second chances. And then we see David, a little shepherd boy who was out tending his father's sheep, and then God used him in such a way he anointed him. Not only did he fight Goliath, in that great battle, you've heard about it. The little shepherd boy and the giant, David and Goliath. Well, that wasn't all. God anointed him, called him, and used him as a great king of Israel. You know, as I look throughout the Bible, and I look at all these different stories and how so many turned their back on God, tried to do their own thing, wanted to run their own race, mark out their own path, live their own life and do what they wanted to do. And yet God had a plan to take their lives that were a mess and turn them around. And you know how I say it. He takes a mess and makes a miracle if we allow him. And his mercy and his grace, it's so amazing to me that it flows upon all of us when we don't really deserve it. And yet it's there if we'll just turn to him and let him take our lives and what we've made of them, which is usually a mess, and turn it around for His glory and His purposes. You know, if He's able to do what He did for Paul, the apostle, for Moses, for Peter, for me, 
Don't you think he's more than able and capable to do it for you? I just wanna encourage you today, no matter what you're going through, God loves you. He's got a plan for your life and he will take whatever mess you're in. He'll take whatever health situation you're in, whatever insecurity you have, whether it's food or economics or job insecurities. He will take every situation in your marriage, in your children's life, your grandchildren's lives. He will take your life and turn it around and give you a second chance if you'll just trust in Him and look to Him. So many times throughout my life, I thought I blew it too many times. I thought I'd messed up too many times. I grew up knowing who God was, knowing that Jesus loved me, accepting Him at eight years old, and yet I continue to make mistakes, continue to miss the mark. I continue to do my own selfish things because, you know, we're born in, in this flesh and we are selfish as human beings. And yet God, with His grace and His love, He wooed me back and called me back and drew me back and gave me forgiveness and showed me a love that no one else ever has and gave me a second chance. And like I said, probably a hundredth chance, a thousandth chance to love Him, to serve Him, and to follow Him. And I'm so grateful for that. God's love and His grace goes beyond our failures. And when we come to the place where there's nothing left, where there's nowhere else to turn, I encourage you, turn to God, turn to Jesus, because He can take your life and turn it around and use it for His glory. When we realize that there's nowhere else to turn, make sure you always realize there's a God who loves you and you can turn to Him. In just a few minutes, I'll be sharing two stories about success, not success in this world of making more money or getting a better job, but two men who were touched through Fred Jordan Mission because God touched them right on Skid Row at Fred Jordan Missions, and now their life is completely different. Keep watching. Today, as we look all around, no matter where we are in life, more than ever, we see needs, great needs, hopeless, hurting, desperate people. And what we would typically see on the streets of Skid Row, we are now seeing in every city, every community, and in every neighborhood. Hunger is no respecter of persons. Willie Jordan says, hunger never takes a day off. For those of you during this unprecedented time of history who are doing good, then we ask that you would generously give to those who are not as fortunate. So many from all walks of life are hurting. Will you extend a hand of mercy to help them in their greatest time of need? Your most generous gift is needed. Go online to give fjm.org. Whatever the amount, great or small, your donation is greatly appreciated. conversation by connecting with us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Visit us at social.fjm.org. Well, David, we were just talking about, you know, the people on Skid Row and the people out here in Coachella Valley, like the number one thing we see and that we hear is how lonely that mm. they are and how abandoned that they feel. And that is just, I think, has to be the worst feeling Absolutely. for someone to go through and feel like, just like they're lost and all alone. And Absolutely. then from that, all the things that unravel from there, as from addiction to, I mean, yes. the list goes on and on. I know that even with, for myself, I need hugs, I need touch, I need those kind of things to get through my day. So how important is it that even just those moments are a sign of hope that there's others going through it with us. And even my children coming up when they're going through a struggle, they just yeah. want to hug their dad or they want to hug their mom. So we know that's important even for yeah. those that are on the streets or even those that are um, in the communities as yeah. well. I, that was my first few experiences out on Skid Row and bringing food and bringing blankets and bringing water and just giving and giving of material things and asking, you know, what do you need? And over and over, and again, can I get a hug? You know, just a smile. And it just really just crushed my heart because it is so important that just human touch and just feeling that love, you know, and nothing 
is greater to remind them that of God's love, right. that nothing can separate us from His Ab love. Absolutely. You know, so we get to deliver food boxes to families all over. And my favorite part is knocking on the door, seeing the smiles on people's faces or, or what are you guys here for? Because at that moment, I feel in a certain way like Jesus that I get to start at their feet and say, hey, mm -hmm. what are you in need of? How can I help you? What can we do for you? And, and not often are people knocking on even my door to ask me how I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. I go to this community. This was one of my favorite stories. This was a few years back and we go to this community and I see these little kids. They're running up to all these doors and it's about eight o'clock in the morning, right? They're in their pajamas and they're putting <laughs> these stickers on people's doors. I couldn't figure it out. Well, I get to one of those houses because I'm getting ready to knock and on it was a eviction notice. Mm. These kids were passing out the eviction notices. The next house I go to, it said, you're late on rent. Aww. You're this. And I'm like, what is going on? Why isn't why are the kids yeah. the one doing this? So finally I get to the house that, that those little boys were, they, they went into and I knock on the door and I, I, the person opens up their door and they're barely looking through and I said, hey, I'm here, I wanna go over there and um, bless you guys with a box of food and just pray for your family. If there's anything you guys could, um, you guys are in need of. Mm -hmm. And the lady was just very apprehensive to do that, but she did. We prayed for her, I got to know her name. I came back a few weeks later and I knocked on the door again to see how she was doing. This time she opened up the door. She had a little bit more of a smile. She was ready to meet me. And uh, um, she says, I'm the manager from this apartment complex mm -hmm. and I'm even behind on rent, mm -hmm. but I'm so embarrassed to go over there and put these signs up that I haven't left my house in a long, long time. I go out at nighttime to get my groceries. I'm, mm -hmm. And I could just feel oh. the pain on this lady, yes. right? That she would send her kids out to do mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. Well, we prayed with her, we talked with her, we encouraged her, we shared about Jesus. I told her about a great church right down the street mm. that would love to have her, right? Mm. And just breathe back life into this, this young lady. She had little kids, she was still young and vibrant. Yeah. So a few weeks later, she you can see her, she's out walking in the community, she's going out. A few months later, she's doing the same thing. She comes and she delivers food boxes with us. Oh. <laughs> a few months later, I get a letter in the mail and it was from this lady. And it said, the narrow door has done amazing things for our family, caring for us, showing that there's hope, showing that during times of loneliness that there's people that are watching over her, and even more that you directed me to a beautiful church that loves on me. We didn't know that she was behind um, in rent because she had medical expenses for her kids that they mm. were going through and things like that. So she was getting ready to be evicted from you her own place. You never know what people are going through. But she sent us a check for a dollar eighty-four. I can remember seeing the check. And she says, it's not much, but I'm praying that this is enough to come and bless another family and to keep oh, moving forward. So we can see it just how <laughs> it all works together. It's just, it it's amazing, but we oh. need that. We need people to come through to, and even if she wasn't in need of the food boxes, just to knock on someone's door, let them know, hey, we're here. We care for you. Someone we love cares. you. And even more than that, Jesus, Jesus loves you. you. And we're not oh. here because it's a it's a coincidence. We're here because no. God called us yeah, right here. It's not a coincidence. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, just a dollar. 80, 84. 84. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. So we know it's working. Yes, we know we that know God's doing working. great things. And, and we couldn't That's do right. this without our volunteers, without the people helping us to pursue the mission to uh, to declare and demonstrate Jesus Christ in the yes, community. Yeah. So a dollar eighty four. Those that are watching, and you know, we always talk about certain amounts and how much if you give it will you know fill this box. Yes. But just a dollar eighty four. And those that are watching, would you just encourage them that even if it's a dollar eighty four or if it's a hundred and eighty four dollars of just how that can make an impact. Absolutely. And I know that sometimes we're trying to figure out, okay, is this enough it is any amount would help any amount any amount yeah well what we do for others god makes happen for us so let's get back to work and Amen. let's get to it here at fred jordan missions every day we see all all types of people i remember as a kid my father fred and my mom willie teaching me a song about jesus loves the little children of the world Red and yellow, black and white, we are all precious in God's sight. I still know that song, I taught it to my children, and that's exactly what we see here at Fred Jordan Mission every day. Red and yellow, black and white. Every single person that you could think of, from children all the way to seniors, are here on the streets living in LA. 
and they come to our doors to be loved on, to be shared with that Jesus loves you and Jesus saves. You know, we hand out water, we hand out drinks, we hand out snacks, we preach the gospel, we have hot meals, we do special events. But if you want to know who comes through our doors, it's all of us. There's no certain person, there's no certain look. But like I said in that song, red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in God's sight. That's who we see here every day at Fred Jordan Mission. People from all around this country that end up on these streets can come through our door and we will serve them as we declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus to those in need. Second chances. One of the second chances that I got way back in the day was when I was playing college football. I'll never forget what my college football coach said to me. He said that no matter what you've done in your life, no matter where you've been, no matter how you failed God, failed your family, failed your friends, if you're willing and able to just say yes to Jesus, Jesus is more than able to forgive you, to cleanse you, and to put you on the right path. He said, don't let your past failures and shortcomings dictate your future in Christ Jesus, but allow your past failures and shortcomings to be used by God to help encourage someone else. You know, that's what happened when I was on Skid Row just a few weeks ago. I met a young man who had been coming to the mission now for the last, I guess, year or so. And he'd come every day and he would just ask for prayer. He said he'd come and sit under the mission building because all of our speakers are outside, always playing worship music, always having a message on it, telling how God loves them and God cares, praising God through worship and song as we would play some of the greatest songs and music that's happening in our world today. Worshiping Jesus and he would just sit there and listen and, and he would hear God's word and he would hear music to uplift his soul. You know, he grew up in the South, he grew up in a great Christian home, yet he did his own thing. And this young man in his 30s, he went his own way. He got into drugs and alcohol. He knew what was right, but he made some poor decisions. And when he was faced with those difficult situations and made those poor decisions, he got lost. So lost that he ended up in LA, strung out on drugs and alcohol, ended up on Skid Row. But you know what? He kept coming to the Fred Jordan missions, he told me. And he came to know Christ. He went through a program and he gave his life to Jesus. And Jesus, through that program, rehabilitated him. Not just his soul, which was saved and changed and washed white as snow instantly, but he dropped the drugs and the alcohol. He cut out all of the garbage out of his life. And today he's two years sober and Jesus is still working in his life every day. And he came weeping and crying the other day and said, will you just pray for me? I just wanna leave this situation and I wanna to go to the next place that God has for me. And I feel like I'm supposed to go back to the South where I'm from. And we laid hands on him and he's wept and cried because God had done so much in his life. But yet God is a God of second chances and he's got another plan for this young man somewhere else. Also, there was a young man that I just recently got back in contact with that was blessed and touched by Fred Jordan Mission in the 90s, strung out on drugs. I believe it was heroin. And yet at Fred Jordan Mission, he came through our discipleship rehab program and God changed him, saved him and delivered him from drugs. And you know what, today he shares on his social media, he shares on all of those platforms and, and with all that he has, how God has changed him, how Fred Jordan Mission got to be part of how Jesus used us to touch his life. And then he goes back to Skid Row in LA and he reaches others that have lost their way. You know what, there's a God of second chances who loves you, who gave me a second chance and those two young men a second chance. And through Fred Jordan Mission and that calling that's been there for 76 years and gonna continue until Jesus comes back to take us to heaven, we are going to continue to reach out with his love, his grace and his mercy, letting people know that it doesn't matter how many chances you've got, God's got another chance for you if you'll just turn your heart and life over. To Jesus. You know what? If you pray for us already, thank you. If you don't, please pray for us. Stand with us as we continue to give second chances as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. You know, we're not the one that does the work. We're not the one that saves or forgives or anything else. 
We're just being the mouthpieces of Jesus. We're just sharing his love and wrapping our arms of love around them as we're the hands and feet of Jesus. But make no mistake, God is doing all the work and Jesus is doing all the saving and all the delivering. But we get to be a part of it and you're a part of it by partnering with us. If you do, thank you. If you're not a partner yet, do you wanna come on with us? Come volunteer, come see what we do or keep watching this program and see how God's changing one soul at a time throughout the week at Fred Jordan Mission because of your help and your support. Stand with us as we continue to share the only hope this world has, the hope of Jesus, with those who are hungry, homeless, helpless, and hopeless, with the hope of Jesus. God bless you. My name is Sarah, and I've just lived in LA for about five years now, and I love downtown. Um, I love the people who live in LA, and I love any chance I get to help be part of that community, help serve and love that community. The kids just light up when they see the baskets and what's inside of it. Um, and it's just a fun way to meet people uh, that I probably wouldn't otherwise, and to just spend a couple of seconds making that human connection that, especially in this past year of COVID, I think we've all been missing. And so today, it's just kind of a reminder of we need each other, and um, that's why I love this event. We're really happy for this uh, mission to help us. It's gonna help us a lot. Now in these times, on these situations, uh, people are struggling to get the baskets for their kids. And thanks to you guys for the mission, you know, our kids are gonna enjoy it and they're gonna have a good time. Thank you so much and my God bless you. Today as we look all around, no matter where we are in life, more than ever, we see needs, great needs, hopeless, hurting, desperate people. And what we would typically see on the streets of Skid Row, we are now seeing in every city, every community, and in every neighborhood. Hunger is no respecter of persons. Willie Jordan says, hunger never takes a day off. For those of you during this unprecedented time of history who are doing good, then we ask that you would generously give to those who are not as fortunate. So many from all walks of life are hurting. Will you extend a hand of mercy to help them in their greatest time of need? Your most generous gift is needed. Go online to give fjm.org. Whatever the amount, great or small, your donation is greatly appreciated. As I close today, I wanted to share with you from Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You know, I just wanna encourage you to press on, never give up, never quit, keep running the race. Even if you're on your knees or you're, you're on your elbows crawling along at times because life is hard. Continue to press on. God will pick you up and he'll take you through anything if you never give up. And also, I wanted to just let you know this as we look at that great scripture that just encourages us that, that God will meet all of your needs according to his riches and his glory in Christ Jesus from Philippians. He will meet your needs. And you know, at Fred Jordan Mission every day, I have boxes all around me that we give out really by the tens of thousands uh, as we serve people. Rice, beans, peanuts, there's milk and dairy in a lot of these. There's so many things. I mean, just tons and tons, canned goods, juice, and it's all provided because of friends like you, viewers like you, who stand with us to help those in need. There's so many needs that we see on the streets every day. There's so many needs in the Coachella Valley that we face every day by seeing children and families that are hungry and hurting and hopeless. Those men and women who live on the streets from 16, 17 years old to some that are 80, 
90 years old, living on the streets at Skid Row, on the curb, the gutters, and in the hallways of people's buildings where they have nothing. But because of you and your partnership, we get to declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus like we have for 76 years. Yes, 76 years, not a week, not a month, just not a year and plus of COVID, but we've been here 76 years and we've been here through COVID and we'll continue until after COVID because Jesus has called us to serve him by serving the least of these and you're a part. Thank you so much for those who pray for us, who support us. And if you don't, I wanna encourage you, those men and women who live on the street, whether they're old or young, those boys and girls who live in the surrounding cities of Los Angeles or in the Coachella Valley, they need you, they need us, they need us together to share the love of Jesus with them, to help them in their time of suffering and point them to a loving God and a savior, Jesus. And you know, with your partnership, with your help, we will continue to expand our reach and go tent by tent, block by block, city by city, reaching those in need in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. Thank you for standing with us. And thank you for caring for those who need Jesus. in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? Reach for The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.